Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight. And we uh, thank you uh, for this, this word that you have uh, put before us, Father. And we just pray for your wisdom and your knowledge and understanding uh, imparted to us, Father, um, that we might gain and learn more about, about you and about your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather him, cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the Lord, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye, ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Verse 17. This is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to this world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to this world but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Verse 25. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Mm. Amen. Because of the way that I I perceive that I learn and that I believe that it's uh, a lot of people do. Verse nine to me is very is pretty important. So he has the, he's showing us the example of his father loving him, and so it, it gives us uh, a stepping stone, if you will, something that you know. The father has shown, has loved him. He's he's emulating that to us. 
Amen. You know, in this abiding that he talks about, you know, that he begins to talk about in 15 verse, verse 1, it's really an exposition on things he's, he said uh, previous to that. I'm sure you could find it in many places, but I, I was harking back to 10 verse 9, and he says, I am the door, and, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And, and here he kind of goes into that, you know, he goes into more, I think, more more detail, you know, on what that what that is and what that means this this abiding mm -hmm. and it's uh <clears throat> verse two there um either you know it's going to be um taken away or you're going to be purged there's going to be discomfort no matter which way you look at it mm -hmm. wow Yes. I know my version of verse three, you know, the King James says, now you are clean through the word. And it says that clean translates pruned. Mm -hmm. oh. Now you are pruned through the word, which I have spoken unto you. Well, the word is a double-edged sword, right? Mm. So what do you think that means, Don, for us as we read the scriptures this evening? as we just did yeah you know um when you when you well you know and seeing that in light of, of of verse verse two that you were reading you know it's it's what god is is doing for us and that's that's the putting off putting off of things that are not not of him mm -hmm. that abiding in him is in stark contrast to the abiding in the world that we are mm -hmm. not partakers of the things of the world mm -hmm. and um through him, through him, we put those things, we put those things off. You know, it talks about him being it, but, but don't we, you know, in essence, we need to choose, right? We need rightly to choose him, to choose him and to put off the things of this world. And he's talking about grafting, you know, so he's the vine and we're the branches. So we're cut and then grafted in. So, you know, without that dependency on that main vine, you, you die. Mm. The nourishment that you, you were receiving before the grafting is now changed. You are getting nourished from the new, the new vine, that new, mm -hmm. that new grafting, what is going into you. The life that is going into you now is, is, that, is Christ's life that is going in you now. Mm-hmm. Grafting, I think, is just, a, it's, it's a remarkable, it, it's remarkable what, what people can do with that and, you know, what, what they become as a result of it and the unique fruit. It's these people that, that, you know, mess around with it. But I, I think it's, yeah, it's a, it's a nice comparison, I think, to uh, what the life in Christ is. Mm -hmm. yeah, those, those words for clean and purge are, come from the same root. They're basically the same word, just different forms. And it means to purify or clean, to purify by fire, mm -hmm. to prune a vine, to clean off anything that is uh, all but that which is not forbidden, uh, free from corrupt desire, from sin and guilt, free from the admixture of what is false with what's genuine. Blameless, innocent, unstained with the guilt of anything. I know a few years ago I pruned some apple trees for my for my son, and they bore they bore good fruit as a result of that pruning. Mm. Yeah, I'm always doing a lot of pruning with my tomato plants. That's for sure. Mm. You'll yeah. grow out of control if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it is a kind of. Um, a scary process mm. yes because uh, uh you know i pruned my uh uh blueberry bushes uh well not last summer the summer before or the spring and um you know you already had a good crop uh, the mm. following year the previous year and then they say well why would i do why would i cut it back you know i had a good crop you know it doesn't make sense for me to you mm. know cut these branches off you know uh I'm going to get another good crop, 
uh, but hmm. it doesn't go that way. Hmm. Yeah, many times I would pray to the Father, Lord, really? Yeah. That's That's been a, that's, yeah, you, you don't want to do that to me, Lord. That's going to hurt you. <laughs> I need that. I need that, Lord. <laughs> it's part of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this And that's part of coming apart um, and him taking us. Out. That is why the world hates you. Um, he's taken us out of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're no longer partnering with things that we had partnered with prior. Um, and, and, I, and it's interesting because people, they're, you know, out, out in the, teaching world and I come in contact with so many people and I know Jim and many of you have done that in your professions and it just seems that some people will kind of gravitate to you and really be um, interested and curious about the fact that you are a little different we are a little different um, and then others mm. are really they're they're repulsed by it mm. and um, it's very interesting that some mm. hate what the, what you're reflecting and others are drawn to it. Mm. Looking at a bird's eyes view, this, is, and this whole chapter is very relational. And there's actually, you know, we have three main groups, of course. You've got, the, you know, the relation between the disciples and Christ, the relations between the disciples themselves, and the relation of the disciples to the world. Mm. And of course, it starts with our relationship with God, because if that's not right, then nothing else is going to be right. Mm -hmm. it's all, and it's all, of course, centered in Christ. Yeah. He says it's the word. He says you are clean through the word. So it's specifically, it's the word. It, it's Christ, but it's the word. It's the living word. Yes. Yeah. It's all that that encompasses. I'm sorry, Jim. I was going to say the idea of, you know, the world hateth you. He said that at least twice, maybe more. I don't know. It really uh, makes a, um, a real distinction that this is not um, his world, if you will, as it is. Mm -hmm. That this is um, um, right now, it is uh, the dominion of, of the enemy of darkness. And it's, um, it will be, it will be reclaimed, it will be restored, but the current world as it exists now is not in its original state at all. Absolutely. That's, those are strong words, you know, the, um, the world hates you and it hates me. And hates the father. That was a, mm. that was a, that was a, that's that's a very strong word, isn't it? That Christ yeah. coming out of his mouth. Well, you see the extreme example in in Satan and the evil angels, though it truly does ultimately result in vitriolic hate. Mm. It might it might not initially manifest that way, but that's where it it ends. Mm. What is the, um, if you have it handy there, um, Craig, what is, what is the, um, some of the um, rooting of that word hate? Uh, enmity. Um, enmity, right, in Genesis 3.15, right? Ah. Uh, Isn't that the hatred? <laughs> interesting. It's the word misio, translated 41 times as hate and once as hateful. To hate, to pursue with hatred, to detest, to be hated or detested. By extension, to love less. Mm. So it's a pretty, it's not one of those words that has like 15 possible meanings. I mean, that brings us all the way back to the first chapter of John. Where, you know, 
Um, I'm just going to try to get there here momentarily. Um, that, um, yeah. About darkness, you know, that the people didn't know him. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Mm. Yeah. So five. Yes. Well, um, and men love darkness. He talks about that too. John three. Yeah. yeah. Right. Love darkness more than the light. Exactly. Yes. And the hate co comes from when self is crossed. The light, the light shines and brings self into to the light, into the self examination. And when self is crossed, if you don't submit to that, then it becomes bitter hatred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, so strange that uh, that the the light of truth. Um, depending on how you experience it, can turn into a poison. Mm. Mm -hmm. To um, make one vile. Well, it's interesting. I remember um, hearing a talk where, you know, one of, the, one of the first things that God mentions when he talks about the curse as a result of sin is thorns. And a thorn, it's really interesting, is, you know, it's made from the exact same material that builds the stem and the leaf. And the only difference between the two is a stem and a leaf, it, it twists and uh, unfolds and becomes, you know, uh, you know, this large surface area that can receive the light from heaven, and that gives it power to be alive. And the only difference with a thorn is the thorn is the exact same material, but it just, as it grows, it twists in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. It, it, it in, enfolds on itself, and it becomes sharp and painful to everything around it, and it dries up and it dies. It enfolds on itself, he said. On itself, because it's self. Right. Satan right. took the material that God gave him, and he just twisted it in the opposite direction of that which God intended for it to grow. And, and you see by a thorn the, the outcome of that. And, and we all do the same if we, if we choose to follow Satan's principles instead of God's. Mm -hmm. That dichotomy is really interesting. That yes. it comes from the same thing. Yes. And then just diametrically opposes. Yeah. It, you know? Well, that is us, isn't it? That's, yeah. That's what sin yeah. does. It takes what God has made and, and just turns it, twists it in an opposite direction than the intended direction by mm. design. Mm. Yeah, you, think, you think of that in relation to, uh, to Satan's, Satan's fall. I mean, they were abiding, right, in heaven. There was an abiding that was, that was going on. But yet in this abiding... Yeah, the thorn, if you will. And it, I mean, that's what Isaiah and Ezekiel speak of that folding in, huh? Mm -hmm. turning in on itself. Yes. Yeah, actually, one, one of the words where it's talking about in Ezekiel, when it's talking about the wheels and the rings of the wheels, one of the root meanings of that word actually means to twist. Which I think has this idea of twisting. You're either, you, you know, you know, even with you know, you know, basic subparticles and stuff, we have, we have the idea of a you know a right-handed spin and a left-handed spin, and <laughs> you have this these polar opposites of the same thing. Those wheels were in superposition too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. His words, uh, <clears throat> again, he speaks about that in verse 3, but he speaks about it too, that the abiding comes when uh, my words abide in you. And I take that to mean 
you're living out those words, those words become a, um, a, a, a kind of um, reverberation in helping discern and let you know the intentions and motivations of um, yourself and others as well. Mm. The word does that yes. cleaning. It, 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 it purifies it. It transforms um, the cortex in, 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 in its proper um, sphere in relationship to God. And it has that property of fire to, to burn the sin out of your mind. Yeah. Yes. Of course, it's ultimately the living word that we want actually dwelling in our mind, but he, he accomplishes that through his written word. Mm. And uh, I, I always loved in Desire of Ages, Sister White talks, she makes the almost like comparison between uh, God and Christ. She says that Christ was in, in his, in, you know, in his attribute of being the word, she said he was like God's thought made audible. Mm -hmm. So wow. the idea that, that you have a thought and then the, the process of speaking it so that other people become aware of your thought, that's what Christ is to us in relation to God. That when we see Christ, it's like we're seeing God's thought made flesh. The Pentecostal outpouring. Yeah. <laughs> God's it's thought that, process made audible yeah, in humans. It's that word that makes us clean. Wow. Mm. Amen. The anointed word, Christ. That's why in verse 7, you know, that, that abiding in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and that shall be done unto you. And the, the reasoning there is that because it's the will of the Father and that's why it will be, be done. The will of the Father will then become audible or manifested in you because it is his express will. And I think that's the um, crux of this um, metaphor about the vine is um, the yielding of, you know, one's will, um, relenting to God's will and that it um, keeps you abiding um, with him and um and um that um that vine is responsible for taking care of us and at the very first verse he says i am the true vine yeah that means there's an untrue vine <laughs> yes all right yes Jer jeremiah talks about a strange vine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to read this and then I would hit, hit verse, you know, like verses 10, verse 12, verse 14. And I think there's more continuing. But he says, then if you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love. This is my commandment that you love one another. If you do what I, whatsoever I command you. Uh, you know, I used to I used to struggle with that. That in the sense that he's well, commanding. loving by because it's commanded of me to love i mean isn't that coercion right yeah but yet yeah. right as you grow as you grow into this abiding you know like we said in, in verse seven my words abide in you and you shall ask because because it's an abiding you have to look at it i think in the context of that line of that abiding in him so in essence you're doing what he is commanding because of the abiding it's not really yes. a forced, coerced thing it's just it's it's the abiding in love and you you understand the nature of the relationship it's not an equal relationship ah uh, no. you know um in our society the word command um is it's very hostile it's very abhorrent it's People are repulsive. They'll turn away from it, you know. Um, but I think looking at it in the context of your relation, one's relationship to to the Almighty, to the to the Infinite, mm. um, so the one that gives you life, the right? one that gives you life, um, yeah. it, it it allows you to understand your 
one's place, if you will. And um, all his commandments are love. I mean, the, the, yeah. it's a law of love. And his law is the Ten Commandments. And he's commanding love, but it's not, he's not forcing it. It's, it. His word is speaking love. <laughs> and if you're in harmony with that word, that, that will be the natural outgrowth and development, just like the stem and the leaf. Mm -hmm. come out just the way God designed it to come out and, and work and operate the way God designed them to operate. They don't, the leaf, stem and the leaf doesn't have to think about it. It just has to not resist the, the will of God and his command. Mm -hmm. And the same with us. When we accept his principles of love, you know, when we're in harmony, if, if we're abiding in him and him and us, then we're in harmony with him. <laughs> then mm. you will keep my commandments. <laughs> and, and, and behind the, the, the notion of a command, um, that there is strength in there. Yes. There, there, there's strength in there that somebody is commanding and infusing, um, if you will, strength um, from one who has strength. Yes. From one and who has wisdom, understanding and discernment and knowledge mm -hmm. um, that that he, he's infusing that in that command and it's a it's a promise that it will be so <clears throat> yes yes the, the creator is speaking it and commanding it it will be so you can take that because he's commanded it <laughs> but but if he's someone that you have learned to love and to trust you would do anything he commanded you to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, in, in, in the service, you have a commander. And the commander looks out for you. So, you know, when you think about it, about it that way, instead of being forced or coerced, he has that position of being our commander, right. our chief. So yeah, I, I think that's, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, know. yeah, the authority part of it is it, it reminded me of that that roman centurion whose servant was dying and and told jesus you don't have to come just say the word you know he we understood just, authority we just have to be careful with that in my belief because we are the authority if you will in our household but yet what happens with our children mm. the, you know and it, um, 99.9% .9 of the time anything that we say or do for our children we're doing it for love and they don't see it that way they look at it as punishment isn't that what we do with God it, yeah, exactly that's what, that's what I'm saying Craig that, yeah. yeah absolutely and you know there's a difference between punishment and discipline you know, discipline is to get you back on the right track. Punishment is punitive. It's it, it it's, depends on which side of that you're on. <laughs> I've been on both. I've been on the punishment. I I like the I like you like, the you like being punished, right? No, no, I fought against it. That's why I got more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It depends on the motivation of the discipliner, you know, doesn't it? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> kind of like the lines that we were speaking of on, on Sabbath, Craig, that um, mm -hmm. following authority up until the point that it does not cross the will of God. Mm hmm That's right. It's, it's interesting that <clears throat> as a result of um, being in the vine and abiding and following the words that he's given us within the living word and the commands that we share in Christ's joy, it says there in verse 11, um, that that's where our joy comes from is the joy that he experienced um, in yielding his, himself over to his father. There was a joy for him in that, and that we enter into his joy, that is Jesus' joy. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, again, we put it on the, on the worldly plane. Just think of how thrilled we were when we did something that our parents approved of. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you, you you do that, and wow, you can go another week at least without screwing up. <laughs> yeah, I, and I I don't think that if you're in that joy that you can be fearful. Mm. Well, yeah, because we're told to fear not. Right. I mean, it, it's it's um I I can't imagine trying to be or being a joy at the, that at that time to um somehow be anxious fearful or afraid um i i i don't i've not experienced any person before me in um 44 years in my business that was joyful and was fearful unless they were acutely acutely psychotic and they were all over the place i mean that that's one thing that's hard with verse two as we were talking about you've got this joy and love and love and everything in your heart and now the Lord is, is working on those points that aren't quite so good. Mm. And, and so, you know, um, to, to do that and not, is it rebel against it? Do not, you know, it's to keep your joy up while that's going. It, it's, it's a mindset that I don't, I don't believe we have all that often that it's, it's, you know, mm. it's, um, a lot of times I believe it's, it's woe is me. Um, it's, you know, what, you know, yeah, that's far as I can go. My throat's getting. Uh, you know, looking at verse <clears throat> eight, um, um, the father's glorified. And I, I wonder if that is one of the first fruits that he wants us to enjoy or to experience. And he sits back and, stands back or whatever he does and he he's 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 smiling at that he he sees that we get it we we get him um we get the holy spirit we get um the the yielding of ourselves that he increases and we decrease and he 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 he, um he he looks at that and and it it, it gives glory to him it it has to bring a smile to his face, I suspect. Yeah, I would agree with you, Jim. It's the same. Again, it's just like what we do. And if, if you know, if, if Christ became fully human and fully divine, he had to. He, he has to be there, too. And he's got to be just putting this great big smile on his face and saying, Dad, look at how they're doing. Mm, yeah. Look at how, how these are these are working. Of course, then he says, Dad, hmm, we've got some pruning to do. It, it's also comforting to know that Jesus experienced joy. You know, don't you want him to experience joy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Don't you want that for him, that, that he would experience joy as a result of yielding and every word and how he said everything um, was not his, you know, and he experienced a, a joy there. That's what he's telling us. If we remain in him, we'll experience that joy as well, and it will be full. Uh, what, what, you know, I think, um, you know, as, as, as he increases, um, I think, I wonder, part of that increases um wanting to know that he is enjoyed wanting to know that um he's being comforted wanting to know that um he um is being glorified you know thinking about him and what's good if i may turn that in a very or use that in a very human way what's good for jesus (laughs) exactly and then but you know the whole pro, your, your whole pro, uh, thought process as you were speaking that Jim, it says to me, "Oh, what happens in the other way?" He, he's got to be so disappointed with all of those who are not following him. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's got to be back and forth. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I hear you, but I mean to have those glimpses, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I just hold on to it for a half a millisecond, you know, because while we 
or as being so human and more prone to like you think the other way, Dan, you know? And, uh, but he's saying, I want your joy to be full, Dan, you know? Absolutely. And when, yeah. when our joy is full, his joy is full. But if we don't have him, our joy is not there. And if our joy is not there, guess what? Right. He's right. going to be, shedding, be shedding a tear too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because more than disappointed, he, he's you know he's tender, you know, and pitying. He sees how pitiful we are. <laughs> yeah, and, and I I don't know how this works with um with it. it I, I guess it's not the individual right that he's having the problem with. It is the sin, the sin that he can't understand. The you know we've talked before. Um, Sin doesn't make any sense. It can't. It's interesting that, you know, as you go through all these first 14 verses and um, see what he's asking, um, he moves from the idea of a servant to mm -hmm. a friend in verse 15. And now I but I've called you friends. That's um, Abraham was called the friend of God. Yeah, yeah. To, to, what is a friend when when you think about it? One who's faithful. Mm -hmm. One who one who accepts you no matter what. One one who there you when you call in the middle of the night you know that you can count on that person. Right. Or, or you send them a text message will you teach for me <laughs> <laughs> even even though the individual feels like joke yeah, yeah. appreciate that Dan. gladly yeah yeah well, concern for your health this has been going on for a solid three weeks now dan yeah, yeah it's I know. three weeks uh, well i i i, I uh, on a whole different note, I know it's not COVID nineteen. I was tested Tuesday. Um, tried to get to the doctors today. The doctors are calling in sick, <laughs> and oh, wow. so so they're having to reschedule all of their patients with the doctors. Are... Anyway, hopefully Wednesday I'll get in if I'm not feeling better. Uh, My doctor wouldn't take me in because I was sick. She said you go to the ER. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. And all my daughters who work in ER, they're overwhelmed because yeah. people are here. Yeah. Go to the ER. Yep, the go to the ER. ER's a, the ER's a swamped. Yeah. You're kind of like a leper. That word, that word for friend is uh, phylos or philos in Greek. And, and it's, it's, it's only ever translated as friend, and it means to be a friend, but to be friendly to one, to be an associate, he who associates familiarly with one, a companion, um, fond, dear, neighbor, friend, and then really interesting, one of the bridegroom's friends who on his behalf asked the hand of the bride and rendered him various services in closing the marriage and celebrating the nuptials. Mm. Wow. That's actually a friend. <laughs> so he's talking about friends of the bridegroom here? Friends of the bridegroom, especially, who assist him Elijah with messenger. the marriage. The Elijah messenger. Hmm. That's interesting. When you look at verse 13, Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. What did Jesus do? He did that. And his enemies. He laid down his life for his enemies. Also, yeah. yeah. Yes. There's no, um, there's no higher um, level of ordination than the ordination that Christ gives us in verse 16. But I've chosen you and ordained you. Mm. There's no greater ordination than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
It's interesting yeah. also with the friend, the first time it's used is to describe Jesus as a friend of public, publicans and sinners. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so that's, sinners. that's who the bridegroom chooses as his friends. Yep. Praise the Lord. We wouldn't have a chance otherwise. <laughs> I like that he says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Right. And yep. appointed you. Yep. And you just, I mean, we had to say yes. Oh, what is what does that say to you as you sit there, Cynthia? What does that say to you? For me, um, he was looking for me specifically. Oh. And that 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 brings warmth and assurance of who I am. So where you are right now is a result of his choosing you. His choosing me, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he he loves me. He's put up with me all these years. Yeah, he does put up with us. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and then, then he really apprises us and um, somewhat speaks as a prophet here and wants us to know as a result of all of this relationship with him not to be startled with the violence and the hate that will be um, that that one will experience. He, he's kind of like a prophet here, um, letting us know to <clears throat> not, um, you know, uh, be so shocked. How how could anybody hate me when I'm showing them love? <laughs> I'm showing them care. I'm, you know, um, wanting. But the world hated him. Yeah. <laughs> and he tells us that if we f choose to follow him, we will be hated as he was. And we saw that happen. We're seeing that happen. Because when you experience that out in public, it it can, you know, it, you can... Um, it can make you, um, you know, kind of um, be taken aback when you experience that level of mm -hmm. um, um, violence and, and hate. Especially when it's people that you think cared for you. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, we saw that during the pandemic. There were, there were definitely lines drawn. Oh my. Yeah. That's just the beginning. Absolutely. Just the beginning. But he bore the hate before we bore the hate. Hmm. Yeah. Or I should say he bore it before we experienced it. Yeah. yeah. He sure. said, I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. He spends a lot of time on that mm -hmm. in these next several verses. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Mm. Well, in the timeline, he's getting close to his crucifixion. So he's, he's just pouring out so much That's right. as the chapters build throughout John. And you can just uh, sense how important it is for him to share you know, the good along with the difficulties that are going to be coming their way. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point there. So because they're going to be witnessing the, um, the, uh, the intensity of that hate that's hurled at him. Mm -hmm. And where... And, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, no, I was just no. going to say, we're, we're used to being hated for doing things that we do wrong, but we're not accustomed to being hated for doing what's right. And he's sort of trying to prepare them and us mm. that you're, the response is not going to be good <laughs> many often. And don't let that discourage you. Yeah, and that's Expect a good point. Expect it. Yeah, to discourage you or somehow confuse you. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm what is truth and what you're doing if you're following his word. You've seen how they've responded and treated me, and they're going to see even worse soon. 
Mm -hmm. and understand that that's what happens when you choose truth mm -hmm. I think he's just speaking plainly to them what, what we need to know <laughs> it's such an important message that he's sharing here yeah. regarding that um, you know and in verse, verse 20 he kind of demarcates that too he says remember the word that I said unto you and this reminded me of what you said earlier about, about recalling who God is. But he says, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And he says, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. But if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So there are those that are going to listen when you, when you speak, when you testify. But there are others who are going to. So there's those two groups now. Mm -hmm. And you can see why he, he said, without me, you can do nothing. I mean, everything he's talking about here is an impossible without him. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. to, to, to love others the way he loved us and to, you know, face the, the persecution and the ridicule and the, the difficulties and... It's not in our it's not in our nature to respond the way he needs us to respond. <laughs> and I wonder if before Jesus met him and asked him if he loved him, I wonder if he was able to recollect these words, Peter. Hmm. Hmm. I think the spirit moved in a remarkable way to to bring things to their remembrance. You know, he, he gives that promise to us all, but, you know, to the extent that the apostles had a special work to do, you know, everything that was needed was brought to their remembrance. And God can do that. I mean, you know, I, I think I've, I've, I've had a dream where in my dream I was, I was reading the Bible and I could, I could see the Bible and I could see the verses like on the page and where they were on the page and the page numbers and everything as I was reading the Bible. And, you know, I can't remember that when I'm conscious and awake, but somewhere that's in my mind because <laughs> I, I could see whole pages of the Bible in my memory <laughs> that my, in my dream. And, I, you know, God can bring anything to your remembrance. Like, you know, we can't imagine how, you know, how many times have you, you know, encountered a smell that you haven't smelled in 30 years and just a wave of memories come through. Right. Right. You know, yeah. the Holy Spirit can do that as needed. <laughs> you know. He can also tell you, he can also tell you in a situation what to say and how to say it. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. I just couldn't figure out uh, <clears throat> how did those um, honey honey dip donuts that were in my dreams last night from <laughs> Beach, how they got in there, <laughs> but they were there. They were they looked delicious and everything. <laughs> Gee, McDonald's, I think they're called right near my brother's place. <laughs> wow, that's a pleasant wow. dream. Yeah, it was. Hey, all things give thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't gain a pound. <laughs> no. 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 It's interesting how he describes the father as the husband then, you know. Yeah. I think we all, we often and maybe myself think of Christ as the husband then, but he calls his father here the husband then. Mm. We go, we go back to that on verse 1, I am the vine, the true vine. Um, you know, there's so many other plants. There's oak trees and cedar trees and all of these other trees, if you will, that Jesus could have used. The vine, I, I, I see as kind of supple, try, you know, being able to move what it needs, um, be, being cut in the middle but yet still grow. Um, the vine is a lot more resilient th than you really think about when you truly think about it. Um, it's, it's got a lot of gumption. Very adaptable. Yes. Yeah, that's the word. And it was revered by Hebrews. 
Mm. Of course, it is. I think Sister White talks about it. It was like considered the noblest plant. Mm. Anything that grew on a vine. Oh, hmm. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Remember, King Ahab, didn't he want somebody's vineyard? Yes. Oh. Yes, he right. did. Yeah, he, 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 uh, he relied on his queen to get it at all cost. Yes. In verse 22, it reminds me of what Paul talks about, um, that we're without excuse. You know, that every right. man, every woman, right. that light is revealed to them in the darkness and that there is no cloak there is no um mm. rationalization or excuse for um one's decision to turn away from christ yeah so and here he's he's very pointed toward well, it seems like he's pointed toward the Jew Jewish people in the in the sense that they, you know, they revere the Father, they they say they love the Father, you know, and that they obey the Father. But yet he's saying, if you hated me, you hated the Father. But yet he's mm -hmm. saying this to his disciples. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't. Yeah. I think that's the only audience that's present with him at this time. I thought. You have to go back to 18, the beginning of the start of this, that, you know, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you and out of the world, therefore the world hated you. So that's, wh that's where he's, he's, he's speaking of is that outside world. That that's not of his. If the world loves you and doesn't hate you, you got to problem <laughs> <laughs> you're not in a right relation somewhere mm. yeah. <coughs> it is an interesting thought truly yeah. how, how much do we you know how much time and effort you know are put into trying to make the world love us mm. you know not mm. that we should be unlovable but you know perhaps that's not the exact focus in revealing love is trying to be loved <laughs> not only that craig but 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 also um how much time do we spend trying for us to fit into the world mm. to you know that's right uh, oh yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's hardwired it's, for approval from the world that's what our, our society is it's it's almost hardwired to get mm -hmm. approval from the world in order to, to have accomplish anything to get anything yeah. Yeah. to move Before, forward and social media has taken that to like you know the phd level you know scientific experiment on the uh, on the psyche of our children basically mm -hmm. yeah the most vulnerable right you know how many likes can i get on right. whatever right. i'm putting out there yeah. They, they hire many, many neuroscience scientists That's to right. apply the, um, the, the research, what we do know about how people will react or think or what have you, they, that is all based on neuroscience. That's right. I'm just, again, taken aback with the, um, not how much he focuses and the time he spends on that but what i'm seeing about it is how care he's he's caring for the disciples right now mm -hmm. he's really helping them preparing them and he's just extending himself in such a mm -hmm. in such a very deep way it's not hurried it's, he repeats mm -hmm. it he he shares it in different kind of way but he it, it all behind that he's he's really concerned for them yeah, it's like Sue said, you know, he is feeling the time coming. Yeah. And he wants to make sure that they understand exactly what, what he's there for and what he's doing and what their responsibility is. And this is a message that we will need 
for our individual selves and uh, selves as a, as a group as well will need this message. Right. It's, it'll be a message I think as times come um, more um, trying, we, we'll, we'll need to hear this, read this message over and over again. Absolutely. Back and a I little think, bit. Oh, go ahead, Jim. I was just going to just add one thing. And I think it speaks to that he is the vine. That's why he's the true vine. He's a caretaker. He's a, he's a caretaker right now. Back a little bit to what Craig was saying. Um, I, 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 my mind is kind of foggy, but it may be. A, um, it's it's the, the the need to have affirmation in this world is one of the reasons why I very seldom answer an altar call. I just figure that it is that speaker's um, ego that's trying to see who in the audience wants to come up and be with them. Again, it's just my take. Don't. Well, it might be the case, though, in, in the, the defense of people who do that, I believe Sister White said that every message should be concluded with an appeal. But it, it doesn't have to be an altar call, the appeal. There's many ways you can make an appeal, but mm -hmm. um, so in that very, you know, the motivation for many might be exactly what you're saying, Brother Dan, so don't get me wrong. Um, but it might not necessarily be that. That whole idea of light and darkness, you know, you really see in verse 22, we talk, you know, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. light shining in his word that he's speaking. Yeah. And you really see how God judges there, that he doesn't. Uh, he only holds you accountable for what you knew. What you know. He shows them as naked. Yeah. That's right. Back, back, back to your point, Dan. Um, the thought came across my mind is, you know, when the elder um, is saying that prayer, you know, we, we ask for prayers of thanks and offerings that... Um, maybe there needs to be more more silence um in that prayer um to be able to um allow the holy spirit to be working through each individual in the congregation who may not verbalize and articulate or may not even have um the, the thought of what they need to pray for um to allow for that um holy spirit at that moment in time that maybe uh, the silence may provide about those moments and maybe hopefully more than moments um for those needs prayers praises whatever it is that mm -hmm. are not articulate for them to ascend i agree jim wholeheartedly mm -hmm. it, it just it takes a while for it to um to manifest itself because i know when i do that all of a sudden, I'm thinking, what is everybody out there thinking? I'm, I'm being silent up here. <laughs> are, are there thoughts on, on God? Or are there thoughts on, why is he being so silent? And so it just, it takes perseverance, which I have not followed yeah, through and, on. And, and, you know, I too, when I, when I, when I, I, I it's silence. It's, 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 a, it's, a, something's happening there. And um, I'm, I, I don't. I don't know what it is, but something's happening there that people are having their um, Garden of Gethsemane um, at that moment. It's a Garden of Gethsemane for people to experience. You know, when, we, when we've when we had moments of silence where we have, you know, the person leading the prayer has said, we'll have a moment of silence for those who wish to pray. Um, it's some it sometimes to me it feels like it's cut too short oh it is it's always yeah, yeah it, there isn't enough time to formulate your thought to pray the thought before they, everybody you know before they say okay 
that's where our worldliness kicks in. We're, we're worried about everybody who thinks it's too short. Uh, I mean, too long. I'm sorry. Too long. Everybody, everybody... Right. We knew that. <laughs> we knew what you meant. Yeah. 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 Are you referring to Craig's sermon there? <laughs> no, I missed Craig's too sermon. Short? Too short? Too short. I had to be with my mother. Um, <laughs> That's why I, will, I, will add, I will add this, Dan. I think maybe qualifying saying you, you may see a shift and where there may be a greater time of silence and understand that's your time and your the intimacy of your thoughts with God. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, to qualify that so there isn't the discomfort within oneself or the concern with the discomfort in the others in the congregation. Yeah. People yeah, don't I, like silence. I had to uh, do some explaining, Craig, why I was over an hour late getting home. Oh, <laughs> some explaining to do. <laughs> Lil, Lil was on the verge of calling or texting Jeff and saying, "Where is he? Can you find him for me, please?" <laughs> it's icy out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's interesting <laughs> as we consider verse twenty-one. You know, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they do not, they know not him that sent me. Namesake. You know, when we clash with people, you know, you know, one of the first things we should do is, you know, self-examine and, you know, what's, what, what am I doing that might be part of the problem? Mm -hmm. But, you know, instead of getting mad at somebody else for how they're mistreating you or clashing with you or making life difficult for you, you know, we, we can be like Christ to have his his mind is to, you know, have pity on them, recognize mm -hmm. them that they know not him that sent me. You know, they, they don't know the name of God. That, may, that also might be the source of conflict. Mm -hmm. how, how, can I, how can God use me to help them know his name, his character? And, and with that... Um... You know, as it speaks about that in Ezekiel, that he does things for his name's sake, um, more than anything else, um, that you, one could one could um, understand that what was being hurled at him at the cross, that he was able to say, "Father, forgive them, for I know no, they don't know what they do." Because it was because of his namesake of who he is and his character, and his um, um, his beauty, you know, that all of that was being hurled at that, and he could he could because of his namesake and his father's namesake, he could say, "Father, forgive them. They they, they don't under they don't know what they don't get it what they're yes. what they're doing at this moment in time." Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, he basically he, he tells them. To do one thing, and that's to love everyone the way I've loved you. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, you're going to get one of two responses. If mm -hmm. they've received my, my, they know my father and have received me, then they'll receive you. <laughs> and if not, they're going to hate you. But he, he doesn't say hate them because they hate you. No, he says love them. Love them. Either way, love them. <laughs> and in doing that, you bear witness of who he is. Yes, exactly. And, and, and is he saying to us, too, um, that he that hate me hates the Father? Is he saying um, to Jim, is he saying, Jim, um, don't hold on to that. That's not yours to hold on to. You did not bear that cross, Jim. Mm -hmm. I bore that cross. That is mine. Um, here, let me take that from you. Right. Wow. Like he wants to take sin from me. And um, that he wants to put a robe of righteousness. He says, that's, that's not yours to, to yeah. take on. I, I took that on. It's mine. Yeah. To Amen. transfer to, to say, here, Lord, this, this is yours. It's more than I, as you mentioned, Greg, I, it's not within me, you know. It's only yeah. with you that um, um, they can be treated in a way that you want them to be treated. Mm -hmm. That's where we need that continual connection. 
that we can do nothing without him where we have that you know the the sap of the vine the like we were talking about on sabbath the free-flowing purity of christ through his spirit continually with us in his presence in order to really be a witness so um 26 and 27 um you know he's he's mentioned this in a few ver few mm -hmm. different chapters before um is that what it takes to to um make christ alive within us was how was he alive in people before before the holy spirit was sent i mean uh, i don't know i'm not sure which way to word that but um the holy spirit was always there correct yes but now is it um more manifest to individuals to pay attention to what's going on I know, I know the way I think about it, or I've come to think about it, is, you know, there's a couple things to, that help me to understand. And that's, one, you know, the, the Bible describes the Holy Spirit's work as like rain is one symbol that God <clears throat> uses. Mm -hmm. But rain doesn't fall out of an empty sky, does it? You know, rain only <laughs> comes through clouds. Right. And in, in the Bible, clouds are actually a symbol of angels. So God manifests his Holy Spirit through the working of angels. Just like the Holy Spirit can work through you and me, and those things that we do for God, it's really not me doing it, it's the Holy Spirit working through me. Okay. It's the same with angels. We've got, the angels are working, doing ministering spirits for god but it's really the holy spirit working through the angels that makes what the angels do efficacious just like for us and up until the cross satan had a claim on the earth as his that's when he would show up at the meetings like we see in job mm -hmm. saying he's walking up to and fro throughout the earth saying this is my territory and even though that claim was illegitimate you know, God, for, you know, the purposes of the plan of salvation, essentially honored that claim. And every time, you know, God would move in Old Testament times to, to do things, Satan would come and he would protest at these meetings saying, what are you doing invading my territory? And they would have these disputes about whose, you know, whose property the beings of this earth really are. Which right. king are they under? But once Christ bought back this earth at the cross, even Satan's illegitimate claim to the earth, God doesn't <laughs> honor that anymore. Right. The earth is now God's again, 100%, you know, in, even including legally. He now has, he's legally justified in being able to do whatever God wants to do with this planet regardless of Satan's protests. And so the angels are now get sent off on missions and they don't have to honor Satan's protest. So they don't have to deal, you know, the, the, uh, the rules of engagement of the warfare shifted because of the victory at the cross. And so the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is greater because it was um, God basically restrained his spirit prior to the cross mm. in honoring Satan's claim to the to dominion over the earth. Oh. That, that, that's the way I think about the difference that he's talking about how he'll send the spirit. It's that he'll, the, the power of that comes with the, the outpouring of the spirit is because now there's no place on earth that Satan can claim as his territory. God can, the whole dominion of the earth has been bought back. And so the angels, can, the holy angels can go anywhere they want and do what they want and ignore the, the, the complaints or the protests of the evil angels. I like that. Yeah. The, the, the other, <clears throat> I wonder, 
a piece to that too in <clears throat> context of all of this, you know, and um, how how will you experience the um, hatred that will be hurled at you uh, that he's saying that it's going to be the comforter working through mm -hmm. you he's going to be testifying who will um, um be standing up um he'll be standing up and will mm -hmm. speak like he spoke to stephen and um that he'll be the one because um <laughs> We, we know that we're not capable of doing that, but he'll be the one working through us to testify of um, the love of Christ in response to the evil and hatred that um, one will experience. Amen. It's interesting in verse 26 too, when it talks about when the comforter has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, with proceedeth from the father so there's like a coming out from the most holy place mm. so we should we should expect when christ is in the most holy place and there's a shift in ministry to his kingship and an anointing of the spirit that it will come forth the process of him coming forth will include the spirit coming forth and another outpouring okay kingly anointing you're muted brother don you're muted brother don we can't hear you don sorry oh sorry about that <laughs> yeah yeah i i like that because yeah and and the order of it you know it's to the father you know the spirit testifies of the father and the son but then we bear witness because of that testimony of the of the spirit, but I also noticed something. Since Jeff Jeff isn't here, I'll bring up the chiasm that that I saw. Amen. In, in verses in verses <laughs> in verses one and two, especially in two, it says it says um, every branch that beareth fruit, uh, he purges it that it bringeth forth much fruit, and that goes right in with with verse twenty seven. Ye also shall bear witness. So we are bearing witness because. Of, <laughs> Because what the Son has done in accordance to the Father's will, we can bear witness. Um, just like it was at the beginning. I didn't dig into the chiasm any deeper than that. It's just a pick the beginning. <laughs> we, Jeff would be we, proud of you. We've yeah. gotten rid of the direct um, relation or uh, always mentioning Leviticus. And now if we can just do the same with chiasm, we'll, we'll, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Follow, following up uh, Craig what you were talking about proceeding coming out of the most holy um, I could um, although it may not be defined that way but I could see the testifying as the anointing <coughs> the anointing <coughs> that takes place in heaven is the anointing that takes place on earth that, that that's, that's how the, we know in Acts that's how they testified because they were anointed. That's and right. so I don't hear if the testi testifying here is there is an anointing going on. Um, yes. Well, that Amen. That's right. Yes. Amen. You know, wait for the spirit and then you'll be my witnesses. Mm -hmm. He said, witnesses testify. Yeah. So you're absolutely. You need that. Yeah. You need the, you can't be the witness without the anointing. Right. Right. Even Jesus, when he did, gave us his final, his last will and testament at the cross, he had an anointing. Mary anointed him for his burial. Mm -hmm. It shows you, you need that, you need the anointing for that, <laughs> that voluntary death to self. Mm -hmm. I mentioned on Sabbath. That was what really Christ, that was what Christ needed the anointing for, to go all the way with giving up self, all the way to the cross and giving up self requires an anointing. And then you're, then you're the witness because you've gone through that experience through the, the power and love of God and gotten the victory. And, 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 you know, many times we have that opportunity 
Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say as a, an anointing, but the Arionic blessing that we can bless others, um, um, that we, we, we bless them, you know, when we meet them and when we're leaving them, that, you know, the, God's blessing would be upon them to be gracious to them and to give them peace. And our test, our testimony is a blessing. Mm -hmm. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, our testimony helps strengthen others to mm -hmm. go through their experience mm -hmm. and get the victory mm -hmm. and be a witness. Yeah. And that testimony can be like a verbal testimony, but just most importantly, the transformed life is the testimony. Mm -hmm. That's what the anointing brings, is it brings a transformed life that purges, cleanses sin through his word and the connection to the vine. Blood of the Lamb, word of their testimony. Coming on verse 6 here that can possibly have multiple meanings. And, and it does refer to the person who's not within them. And it withers the branch and what have you. But what happens to the individual that is with him and, he, and the branches are being pruned and purged? Well, those, those are burned, are they not? They are not. Are they not burned and forever separated from us? Hmm. The parts that are pr pruned off? Yeah. Yes, that's right. It's interesting. Then you can take those, the ashes from burning those, and you can put them in your the soil of your garden as a fertilizer. <laughs> and it actually helps to restore the soil which the soil represents the mind in the parable of the sower and its willingness to receive the word. Mm. He's, he's bringing good out of that evil. He does that, doesn't he? Yes. Wow. But the ashes are under your feet now. Yes. Under, under dominion. The king's dominion. Verse 7 one says, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And of course, if we're really abiding in him and he's abiding in us, then you know we've submitted our will to his will. And that's why you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. Because <laughs> you're just asking him to do what is already his will. And only what's his will. <clears throat> Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Yeah that. Um, goes along with what Paul says there in Ephesians 1. Predestined us to the adoption of children. By Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us acceptable in the beloved in whom we have redemption through the blood the forgiveness and so we enter into you know that knowledge that um of the knowledge of his will i mean that's a that's pretty profound to enter into the knowledge of god's will yeah well, this is his will even your sanctification hmm If you're praying prayers for your own sanctification and for others' sanctification, you know those are prayers that you can count on. <laughs> God's gonna want. God's gonna fulfill those prayers. He's gonna hear those prayers. <laughs> I'm counting on it. <clears throat> yeah. So you gotta really want it. <laughs> yeah. And we have to be really ready to receive that. Yeah. Yeah. And not and it, it not have too many expectations about how that's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Ready equates with willing. 
Yes. I know there's a quote where Sister White talks about, you know, often we pray for something and then in, in, in faith, believing, and then the answer is seemingly the exact opposite of what we were expecting. Yeah. And, then, and then it's just amazing. Right after she says that, she goes, in these trials and difficulties, we are having the answer to our prayers. <laughs> Yeah. that he's he's working on bringing about the transformation that will actually make it possible to answer that prayer and Paul um, also in Colossians adds to that in verse 9 in chapter 1 he says for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of a lot a lot of um yeah a, a lot of uh, a lot of lot of, of of asking of god to uh to know his will be not trans uh be not conformed but be transformed by the renewing of your mind yeah that ye, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father, our most holy creator God, we thank you for this beautiful study. We thank you for your, your inspired word to guide us and to teach us, Lord. Uh, many of these things are, are out of harmony with our carnal hearts, Lord, and we need, we need you dwelling with us and in us and transforming us. Please Grant your spirit to, to heal us and to transform us and to fill us that we might be your witnesses. Help us to love all, Lord, those who are lovable and those who are unlovable, Lord, those who we care most about and those who, are, those who hate us. It does not come naturally, Lord. We... We need you for all. We indeed can do nothing good without thee. Help us to be united with you. May we decrease and you increase. And uh, keep and preserve us until we can meet again as our prayer. May it be in Jesus' name. Amen.